Um, I wanted to read this verse. This is one of my favorites um, from Ecclesiastes 12, verse 12. That of making many books, there is no end. And much study wearies the body. <laughs> and I think it's very appropriate at this point in the semester. Our students are feeling weary. We are feeling weary. Um, what I find with students is especially our juniors and seniors. Um, at this point in the semester, they are revving up those research papers for you. Okay, and so what tends to happen is I get this flood of students that are quite panicked, but they are panicked about things that I don't think you want them panicked about, all right? So they come into my office and they're like, I don't know how to cite this in APA. I don't know how to do MLA. I have never even heard of Turabian. In fact, they'll come in and mispronounce it. Turabian, um, can you help me with that? And I know that we need to teach correct citation. That's um, part of what we do as researchers. But I don't think it has to be the most important part. I don't think it has to be the biggest obstacle. I don't think it has to be the most painful thing that they do. All right? <clears throat> So my hope with this is that um, by teaching you and students how to use Zotero, that they still learn the citation style, but they don't go through all that pain that goes with it, all right? So what I'm going to do first is show you the magic, okay? Because this is what sells students. I can talk to students all day long about Zotero. Until they see the magic, they don't believe in me. So I'm going to show you the magic, and then we'll talk more about how you can use this, how you can get your students to use it, um, and then I'll have time for a question and answer after that. Okay? So, <clears throat> for those who have never heard of Zotero, it's a way to... Um, Okay, Zotero is a way to capture information. It's a way to capture all the citation information you need to cite sources. And it's a way for students to take notes. Um, they have a way to sync it into the cloud so they'll never lose it. If their <coughs> laptop gets stolen, which students have had that happen, mm -hmm. if their hard drive crashes, they still have their information. Um, so it's a wonderful thing. Now, um, what I'm going to show you is the Zotero um, interface here. When you download this yourself, as I'm sure you all will do, it will be empty. Okay, you'll have three empty columns. That first one on the left is where you can create folders. Basically, you collect the information. Students usually make a folder for each paper that they have, maybe each class that they have. Um, but it's a way for them to keep all their sources separated for the correct project. In the middle, you can see I've clicked on the APA Zotero presentation folder. So in the middle, it's showing all the sources that I've collected for this particular subject. All right. Then over here on the left, uh, we have some different types of information. Uh, the info tab there gives us everything that we need for the citation. So you see that it's got the author. Um, it shows that this is a blog post. Uh, Zotero will generally recognize what kind of article, book, item it is so that it does the citation correctly. Um, here we can take notes. Um, one of the great things about Zotero is it will be free forever. That's the promise anyway. Okay. And as we know with um, changing technology, um, sometimes those promises are kept and sometimes they're not. But I really think that for at least, you know, the next 10 years, okay, there's my optimistic assumption. So Chira will be around and it will be free because it's been around for quite a while already. Um, you can create tags. Uh, if you're researching different aspects, different arguments, maybe you have three arguments you need to, in your paper, you could tag those by the argument. You can also add related information. So maybe you want to connect um, articles that have radically different arguments so that you can then compare and contrast them. You can do that as well. Okay. So 
We're going to close that um, for the moment. And as you know, uh, most students start writing before they actually do the research. I'm still baffled <laughs> by this. Um, I even had an honor student this year that he was very frustrated about me making him do all this research when he could just be writing. Hmm. And um, so I asked him about his writing process. He said, well, I write and then I find some resources. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, that's why you're frustrated. That's why you're frustrated, because I'm purposely making you do the opposite. So hopefully Zotero helps them do the opposite. Um, because it makes it easier for them. So we're going to go into EBSCO because that's what students use the most. Um, honestly, we promote it the most. We love EBSCO in the library. Um, not to say the other databases aren't good if you have another favorite, but I'm going to choose all the EBSCO databases. Okay. And we're going to put in Zotero and research. Let's hope I actually get something right. <laughs> yes, you yeah, have to might. be able to type properly. I really hate that. All right, so I tell the students choose full text. Yeah, research is not spelled right spell. either. That's okay. We would all do that. <laughs> Especially when you got an audience watching. Right. <laughs> and you're being filmed. I'll tell you that. It's the recording thing. It's... All right, so I think we have it. Yes, okay. So it did not um, exactly give us what we want, but that's okay because we're just testing this out. Now, because I have Zotero already installed, when I go into the databases, Zotero recognizes I'm in the databases. All right, so you'll notice up in that big long address bar, there's a yellow folder, okay? Now, this yellow folder is Zotero. And it's saying, I see that you have a list of scholarly journal articles. Which ones would you like to save? Now, I can click Select All if I'm just gathering articles. Click OK. And then down here at the bottom, you'll see Saving to the Folder, APA Zotero Presentation. And it's going to save all those. Now, what's wonderful about this is it's capturing the citation information. Um, that EBSCO already gives us. It's collecting that EBSCO full text PDF. So even if I have no internet access in 10 minutes, I can still read all my articles. I can still mark up the PDF. I can highlight. I can make notes in Zotero. All of that is captured. And if I'm syncing it to the cloud, which I teach all my students to do, then I can't even lose it if I drop my computer after this presentation. It will be there, okay? So, we've easily captured all these articles. Hopefully, the students actually go through and read them. All right, that's the goal. <laughs> so when I open Zotero, you see that I have a lot more articles than I started off with. Now, what I tell my students is um, first of all, you want to go through and check all of this. This is where we still have to know APA, MLA, Turabian rules. Because Zotero is only good as the information it's given. It is very good about APA and putting the article title in lowercase letters. However, if an article is in all caps, it will keep all caps. And you have to go in and, and change that. So that can be an issue. But you'll see it's got the volume number, the page number, the date, ISSN, which most students don't need. Um, if there's a DOI for APA people, it will capture that. Okay, here, um, just to give you some examples, okay, as, as the student reads, the student can add a note. Okay, so maybe they see a quote that they really like, and I tell them, please, when you do notes, do the direct quote. Okay, don't try and summarize or paraphrase in here because then when you write the paper, you'll forget what you did. If you do the direct quote, um, then you know exactly what the quote said and then you can figure out how to paraphrase from them. There, um, just make sure that you put the page number first. Okay, and you'll see when we do the paper why this is important. Okay, 
so you'll see I've done um, a note for page 23. It's already right there. Okay. Now, when I double click on this, I was telling you that the PDF will be right there. It captures it. You can see there it is. I can make comments here. Um, I can highlight. Um, and it will save all of that in Zotero. So I can mark it up the same way I would a paper um, copy of this. All right, so I've got all my sources, and I'm ready to write my paper. Now, I've done this in APA style because I teach it the most, number one. And number two it's, uh, seems to be what students have the hardest time with uh, because MLA is very logical, and the rules are generally the rules. Uh, APA is more of an IQ test. <laughs> um, you know, here's, here's the rule, but in this case, we're going to make an exception, and can you remember the exception? So um, you'll see we have the running head there, the page number. Okay, this, the student has to do all of this part, okay? So they still have to know the style. Although we do have videos that teach them how to set up a Word document in APA, MLA. Oh, no video for Turabian. Oh, is there? Okay. Glenn's our Turabian expert. So um, we do have videos to help them. Uh, page two for APA would be to abstract, but I don't have one. Not that far yet as a student. All right, so here's my paper, and I've been writing away. And you'll see I've, I've put in some direct quotes, okay? And then I've made some generalizations about studies. These are all studies that were done comparing Zotero with um, programs that are not free, like EndNote, RefNote. RefWorks, um, things like that, okay? So now as the student, I've kind of got this written. I'm ready to put in citations, the in-text citations and do the <coughs> citation page. So when you download Zotero, it also downloads add-ins for Word. So they're not pretty icons up there. <laughs> I'll be the first to admit that, okay? But they're still very useful. So we just put up with, um, that maybe he needs a graphic designer to make them a little bit better. Okay, so the first one is when you want to put in an in-text citation. When I click on that, it's going to pull up my information from Zotero. And it says, okay, you've got your direct quote, um, which source and what page, okay? So looking at this, I can click on the title of the work that I'm citing. Here are all my notes, and again, this is why I tell students put your page numbers first, because I need to know that page number. So I'm gonna put that in here, it's page 85. Um, <coughs> there's really nothing else to do other than make sure that the title is highlighted. I click OK, and you'll see that it has put in my authors, the year, and page 85, according to APA format. Now, the only thing that seems to be troublesome is to remember to take out any extra spaces that Zotero puts around that entry, okay? But you'll see um, when it's highlighted gray like that, that's just Zotero reminding you, don't fix this yourself. This is Zotero reference. If there's a problem with it, fix it in Zotero and then ask it to redo the citation. Okay. Now, I go on further down. And as APA is, um, well, social science papers, they often compare uh, many studies that are done um, on the same topic, all right? So there's a way to do that as well. When I add my citation and I say, okay, these different people um, all studied Zotero and its effectiveness in the classroom. So I'm going to pick multiple items, all right? So this one, I believe it's a blog post. This one is a scholarly article. Here we have a book. And I just click the green arrow to bring that over to the sources I want. There's no need to put a page number because I'm just going to list out all those sources. And the authors, I click OK. And you'll see that they've all been put in here properly. So we have Hensley, 2011, semicolon, Puckett, 2015, <coughs> semicolon, and Sample, 2015. 
2011. Okay? So it's added all those in there, and the student can continue to go through the paper and do it that way. Now the best part is when we get to the end. Okay, this is where students start freaking out because they get to the end, and unfortunately, even though I tell them do the reference page first, they don't. So they've really done their in-text citations wrong um, if they've done it by hand. Okay, fortunately with Sotero, it doesn't matter which way they go, um, it's gonna work either way. So they have to create their references, and we have multiple types of um, sources here, so they're all gonna be different. So when I click this um, middle icon, the third one that has all the lines, this is the magic. Oh! <laughs> so, I take it this is an issue for you. <laughs> yeah. How many wish we had this when we were students? Yes, and I have seniors that I'll go into junior and senior level classes and I started showing this now. Usually I can only give them five or ten minutes on it, so we do the magic really fast. Um, and they go, why didn't somebody tell me when I was a freshman? Yes. And I'll go, have you ever had a class with me before? And they'll be like, yes. Hmm. Say, I tried to tell you and you didn't <laughs> listen. <laughs> okay. So, um, but one of the things I learned was I wasn't showing them the magic before. Now I am, and so now they're um, much more motivated to do it. So you can see that we've got our authors, the date, the title of the article should be in lower case for the most part um, in APA. Then we have the title of the journal, or in this case it was a proceeding summary. The volume number, page number, if there's a DOI, it will include that, although I'm not seeing one right now. Hmm. Now, if there is a problem, which sometimes there is. I'm looking to see if we have any right here. Okay, so right here, yeah, the Chronicle of Higher Education is not italicized, right? So again, it's gray when I click on it. Zotero's saying, don't fix it here, okay? Fix it in Zotero so that it's right the rest of your life. Okay, so now here's the trick. I have to figure out which one that was. Yes, you're right, sample accessing. Four, here we go. Right here. So when I click on the info tag, I go, oh, okay. It's because it's seeing it as um, a website type, not um, the title per se. So what I'm going to do, I think, it should be the blog title. Let's see if this fixes it for us. Okay. So should you fix your title while you're there? Because yours shouldn't be capitalized. Did it capitalize it before? Yeah. It did? Okay. Usually Zotero will um, remember that in the APA, but we'll fix it here. I don't know if there were any others, but... There were a couple of mechanical questions I would ask Picky, but... Yes. what I mark off is I don't do right, so I want to ask you... Well, that. yes, and I will tell you that <laughs> this is where, when I tell you your students still have to learn it, they still have to learn it, and I tell them that. Yeah, we rebuild it. Okay. That seems to have at least gotten us closer. Okay, I think we're good there. Um, all right, so it's fixed that. And it once you fix it in Zotero, then it's fixed whenever you use it. Now, here are some things I do tell the students, and this is important to our learning outcomes, right? We want them to know the citation style. We just don't want them to agonize over it. All right. They still have to know it in order to correct it. And I tell them no matter what they use, if they use NoodleBib, Set of Citation Machine, whatever, even EBSCO has its own citation button, I tell them, feel free to go ahead and use that. 
We don't have a problem with you using it. What we have a problem with is if you don't fix it. Because a computer is always going to get something wrong. Um, EBSCO is very consistent about not doing double line spacing or the hanging indent. Uh, frequently it does the titles incorrectly as far as capitalization. There's always something. So um, they still have to learn it, they still have to know it, but it's a lot easier to look over the rules to fix something than it is to try and, and create the thing from nothing. Um, so this saves them some time, but they still do have to learn the skills. And definitely count them off when you see things that are wrong. Um, I always tell them that when I grade papers, I know when they've done EBSCO and not corrected it, because EBSCO loves to capitalize the word of. Yeah. You know, I don't know why, but it always does. So this is, this is a way for students to work better, faster, and I tell them the extra time that they get by using this is not so they can go spend more time on Facebook. <laughs> it is so they can think more deeply about the content they're writing about. I don't want them wasting time um, agonizing over this when they could be thinking about their argument or um, learning more about whatever that research topic is. All right, that's the goal. And that's, I'm sure, what we are all pushing them now, as far as, you know, what should you use and things like that, okay, I'm gonna throw some things out there. Um, so Jiro has two forms. There's one that just kind of hooks into Firefox, if you use only Firefox, um, and that's how it originally started out. Okay, I actually recommend that the students use the standalone version, which is the second version. Um, now, my reason for using the standalone version is I work with two computer screens. So I like to be able to move that standalone version out of my way when I don't need it. Um, if, it's in Zotier, if it's in Firefox, I can't easily slide that away. Um, but also, the standalone allows them to use different browsers, whether that's Chrome, um, what else is out there? Safari for Mac users, things like that. So it works with different browsers. So I recommend the standalone. I recommend that as soon as they um, download the account, they create an account to sync it in the cloud um, right away. There is a USB portable version for students that maybe they're traveling home, their commuters or something like that. Um, we do have Zotero on the computers at the library, although um, it's a little rough in working with with things because as soon as a student leaves, our computers are wiped. Um, and sometimes students forget that. So if they haven't synced it into the cloud, they're gonna lose it. Um, what questions do you have for me? Yes? Could you go back to the, the three column screen? Yes. I have a quick question on before she leaves. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Because at the top you have double references now. Can does that top? I should have you? deleted all okay. that and then rebuilt. Okay, the that's why what, what my question was because they'll leave them all there. <laughs> <laughs> they will. <laughs> they should delete them. Yes. I have another question about that. Now, on ABA, if it doesn't give you a DOI, you're supposed to say retrieve from and what database, and it doesn't seem to be doing that either. So mm -hmm. okay. Now that's a very good question for all you social science people and. For those of you in the humanities, um, this may or may not help make some sense for you. Um, in APA, you have to put the DOI or the publisher's URL of the journal. Now, the students have no idea how to figure out who the publisher is, where the website is, and what I have found in talking with my social science professors is that's not very helpful to them either. So here at Southeastern, we've kind of um, made an adaptation to APA, and that is that the students, instead of giving the publisher's website, they will give the permalink to the article in the database. Okay, so this allows you to quickly go to the article, read what the student supposedly read, and see if things line up. All right, now, the problem is, so Tiara was not built for Southeastern. My dream I don't know when it'll happen, you can all pray, yeah. pray hard. But my dream is it is possible for um, someone who gains enough knowledge of Zotero coding to create a version that would do that for us. 
I would love to create a southeastern version of APA that does the permalink automatically. However, it's not there. So when I teach students, I tell them, you have to add this if you're an APA student. Okay, so it is part of what I teach them. Um, them remembering it, that's something different. But, um, you know, my hope is maybe this summer I'll get to do that. That explains a lot. Yes. Because I got that back from students. No, 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 you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to put the permanent link. Yes, okay, so, so um, and I've, I've tried to ask everyone that I've taught for, is this what you want your students to do? Would you rather have the permalink? Would you rather have the publisher's URL? I've not had anyone say they want the, the permalink. No, it's fine. I yes. Just would, I just wasn't sure. Yeah. And why doing are they doing that? Yeah. So it does bleed over into other classes. Um, I would just say that's something that you'd have to clarify with your students. Um, I would clarify it one way or the other because um, APA makes it very clear that whatever the professor wants is what's right. If you don't tell them what you want, then they're kind of in limbo um, because APA doesn't, for all its um, exceptions to the rules, it really doesn't make some things clear. Um, so how do they get so. the permalink onto the bibliography? Since in the they just copy part or just on the The permalink part? is saved in the information box. So what, all they have to do is copy and paste that at the end, um, and they can do that. Um, so, yeah. Other questions? Yes, yeah, so you want to see the three columns. Okay. Okay, the middle column, mm -hmm. can you give us, I'm trying to think ahead of like a doctoral student working on their lit review and that column, that column getting very, very large, and even looking at yours, how, how would you organize that better? <laughs> to no find, offense, to but find, no you don't case. like to work like this? No, I'm just, okay, Grace has an answer. I did my dissertation also to her own, yeah. and I didn't have any comments at all on my bibliography or my references, so it can be done easily. Um, so you, you can sort by any of those um, topic headings, the okay. title, the creator, or okay. the date added. Uh -huh. gotcha. So if I know the, the author that I'm working with, I'll just click on creator and have it sort that way, Great. and it will automatically come up um, you know, in alphabetical order, and then I can go down to the name, or if I know the title or whatever. So that's one thing. You can also do searches. So, and that's where that tags comes in handy. I mean, when you do get a lot of references in there, it's really hard to remember, but if you've you know, tagged it as lit review or tagged it as assessment or whatever, then you can search by the tags cool. and pull up just those. Awesome. Or you can make, I mean, the folders are pretty helpful too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if you want, if you're doing a dissertation, you might have more than one folder. Back in the, the first page from the paper that you showed us, mm -hmm. can, can we go back there? We sure can. So there, there, there were some, uh, like a typo in one case, there wasn't a space left. In another case, the quote marks were actually left oh, after the parentheses yeah. rather than before. Where, where do you make that correction? Just right there in the paper when that happened? You would make that right there in the paper. That yeah. is totally my error, uh, basically. Um, it is up to the student. Like when they do a direct quote, they have to make sure they put the cursor in the correct space yeah. to insert the citation. And it's very easy to work around the citation to move the period or the quotation marks quotation or whatever. Marks. Just correct it right here. Yes. Yes, they should. Mm -hmm. um, how does this interact with RefWorks? Can you export from RefWorks into Zotero? Or? They will go back and forth. Um, I can't say that they go back and forth um, perfectly. Um, but there is a lot of documentation on the Zotero site itself. Okay, now what I've given you is on the handout, it's basically at the top, there's um, the email of the gentleman that wrote all these guides and everything. There's my email if you have a question for me. There's a link to our lib guide that has all our Zotero information. 
one of the things on the Zotero guide is obviously a link to the Zotero webpage where you would go download it. Um, so it does have a lot of documentation on their website. They have all these forums. So it's how do you get it to go from this program to this program? Um, how do you, I mean, it'll answer a lot of these questions that you have. Uh, the, the lib guide that we have has lots of videos. So it shows you, here's a video, they're real short. Here's a video on how do you download it. Here's a video on how do you get the, your, it set up the way you want it. Um, here's a video on how you go into a database and grab that. Here's how you go into the catalog and grab a book. Um, things like that. So there's a lot of help on the LibGuide. There's a lot of help on the Zotero website. Um, I, I think what's great about it is that we're often told that there's, we're going to get all this help with our new technology, and then maybe that doesn't quite happen. Okay? Here with Zotero, you have Grace, who's done her whole dissertation on it, in it. Um, I work with the APA students all the time, so I know the problems that they have with it. Um, Kathy is the only person that has a Mac <laughs> device. She has an iPad, and so she is um, more of our pro with the Mac side of things. And Mac students can use it. Um, it just looks different for them. And what else do I want to throw out there? Um, I mean, you've got people here on campus that can help you. And please remember that it is my job to help you and to help your students. You are never bothering me. Please ask me to come into your classes. We can set up a time for you and I to talk about it. I can set up a time to talk with a student one-on-one -on -one about it. That's my job and I really like to have job security. Okay, <laughs> so please don't ever feel like you're bothering me. I want to help, whether it's this or something else with your class. Okay, so one of the reasons I require my students to do the long papers in the APA format is in preparation for grad school. I mean, I don't care for myself, but I want them to, when they leave here, not make fools of themselves when they get to grad school. Absolutely. That's my goal. So, I mean, is this kind of adequate for them to move on from here? I mean, obviously, Grace did her dissertation in it. it is, right. The beauty of Zotero is it's free. And they, once they have it on their computer, they have it, no matter where they go. If you are at, um, I believe FSU uh, has um, RefWorks that they pay for for their students. Is that correct? Am I making stuff up here? USF does. USF does. Okay. So the, the issue with um, institutions that buy that kind of software for their students is once the student leaves and goes somewhere else, they lose that access. With Zotero, that doesn't happen. And especially with uh, my honor students, where I know they're going on to grad school, I tell them, save all this stuff. Because you can use an article that you used your junior year at Southeastern. You might want to use it for a paper in grad school. Mm -hmm. You know, that source is still relevant, you know, unless it gets too old or something. And so they've got this collection of research that they've done in this certain area that they want to specialize in. And how great that they can take that with them. And that even when they change computers, if they've synced it in the cloud, they just bring it down to the new computer. They haven't lost a step. Um, I think that's a beautiful thing. Very helpful for our students. They still have to make sure they get it right when they correct it. Um, but as we know, that's, that's their choice. They have free will. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, sometimes the underlining on the reference page is an issue. Is that difficult for them to get things to not be underlined? Oh, as far as the, the hyperlink? Yes. Yes, yeah, so if they'll just right click on the hyperlink, they can click um, delete hyperlink or there's a way to go in there and edit it so that it doesn't underline it. Okay. And they should be doing that. Yes? So obviously, if the students are going into EBSCO, they're using their access through SEU's subscription. Correct. So um, does that mean that the, the program is using like a, an easy proxy URL or the, the program is not. So do they need to log in somehow to 
to be able to get access to the SEU? The way that works for us is that usually students are going through our lit guides. Um, and they go into the databases. They can get kind of to the database. It's when they go to read the article that it's going to prompt them if they're off campus for a username and password. And so that's, that's the same um, no matter where they go. So in Zotero, it saved the link. Um, if this may be a, a place, honestly, where they may hit, hit a problem, and I'm not sure exactly how to explain to them what to do about it. Um, if you're on campus, it captures the permalink without the proxy. Um, so it may not prompt them for the username and password. They may actually hit an EBSCO wall where it asks for a username and password that is not ours. Um, what I tell students all the time is, you know, again, whether they listen, I tell them, as soon as you hit a problem, call the library. Because we can tell, okay, if you're getting this thing about you need an Athens password, you're on the wrong page and you haven't gone through um, the libguides. That's basically what's happened. Now, if they capture the data off <coughs> campus, it does capture the proxy link. So every time they'll be prompted unless they're on campus. I don't know how to fix that yet. I mean, I guess that would be one of the things if I get to write an APA version of Zotero or something like that, um, it might be possible to make sure that it automatically attaches the proxy um, to the link, but right now we don't have that capability. It depends on where the student gets the article on or off campus. Um, the good news is that it does grab the PDF, so um, they still have a copy on their computer, always, whether they have internet access or not. It's just if they wanted to go back to the original for some reason, that's where they'd hit the wall. So does it do aim-make formatting and also how easy is it for a student who says it's my class and then also has a social science class to switch between the two different formatting? <laughs> yes. There are so many versions of this, that, and the other out there. Okay, so I know it does um, AMA, it does Vancouver, it does Harvard. Um, there are some things, like I have a honor student in math, that there's some format that there was like not even a manual for, it's a web page. Mm -hmm. I can't speak to that, okay? I don't, unless somebody's taken the time to create it. The major ones, it's very easy to add that. Most of them come automatically with it. When you first start a paper, it's gonna prompt you which one do you want. But students can take this and flip it and make it an MLA paper with very little trouble. So I always recommend this um, to students that are writing in two or sometimes all three styles in one semester, that does happen. And this is a way for them to compensate for that without wasting a lot of time. Yes? If, um, I was just going back to, to the question earlier that if a, if a person graduates from here and has Zotero, mm -hmm. then they will not necessarily have access to EBSCO the way they do when they're connected to our system. They won't have access to EBSCO, but they will still have the PDF. Okay. They will always have the PDF. And we do offer alumni access now. Okay. Forever. 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 And ever. <laughs> <laughs> until, until it's not so. <laughs> I love working with all of you. <laughs> And so here's my new folder. Um, as long as I have this highlighted, then when I'm grabbing things out of the database, they're going to go into this folder. As long as you have it highlighted, okay. 
yet. So you want to highlight the folder that you want the stuff to go into before you start capturing out of EBSCO. Can you drag drop over if you want from column two up there? If you had something you want oh, to move Oh, if you want to move it into yeah, a different yeah, yeah. folder? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So I could take this and drag it into this right. is new. Right. And there it is. Yeah, is it in both places? It's in both places. Yes. Oh, and something else I should show you is that if they are on a website, um, let's see. Oh, uh, yes. This is eternity. <laughs> yeah, make sure your students don't give you a URL like that because you know, those don't work after about 10 minutes. There we go. Okay. So I'm on this web page. Um, if I right click and go to Zotero, it says create web page from current page. It will try and grab all the information that it can. A lot of Web pages have the author, title, all that stuff embedded in the, the metadata, which we never see, but Zotero does see that, and so it will grab it. Um, our libguides aren't going to give a very good example of that because we don't embed that kind of metadata, but other websites do. Yes? Five minutes. Okay, so you have five minutes to ask your most pressing question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to go. Yes? My stupid question is not related to Zotero. Would you explain about the cloud? What is that for? What is that? Oh, about the cloud. Okay. So um, more and more of our um, technology is moving to what they call the cloud. Really all that is is that we are saving our information onto somebody else's server out there in the internet universe. Okay, so Zotero gives us a certain amount of space as a user, um, and students generally are not going to use up that space. Okay, space is free. But if you were doing a dissertation, did you hit a wall? Okay, um, so if you're just like super researcher, like Peter Althaus, he's, I'm trying to think, you know, who might hit the wall of, you know, they, they need more server space, you can buy it. And it's very cheap, but I don't know of anyone that's actually had to buy it. Okay. So when you do your Zotero, Zotero account, then you also get a cloud account. Don't just yes, and that's what the syncing does. Right. Okay. Is when you change something in one place, it changes it in the other, and back and forth. So that your information should always be current, and that's why then if you lose your device, your hard drive goes bad, you just get the new one, you log into your Zotero account and bring it all back down from the cloud. Isn't that something that's automatic, uh, automatically done or do you have to go The student in? will be prompted to set up an account and all it asks is a username and password. I mean, it really doesn't want any personal information from them. Um, they tend not to do it if they don't know what the purpose is. Um, so if I'm teaching them, I do try and tell them, do this now. I mean, I make it part of the process. Because um, they don't even have to really remember the, the password and username unless they lose their device. Because once you put it in there, it saves it in the Zotero program and automatically syncs. And um, they never really have to touch it again unless they lose the device. Two minutes to ask your most important question. <laughs> We're good? All right, then I expect that you will be coming to me with questions, that you will be sending your students to me, and feel free to ask me to come into your classes. I love Thank it. Thank you.